Okay, in the previous couple lectures, we've um, developed some methods to uh, to extremize functionals. I wanted to uh, spend the next couple lectures uh, giving you giving you some examples. Um, so we're going to begin by deriving what we already know, uh, namely that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. But let's begin and formulate it mathematically. What we want to do is we want to consider the family of curves, uh, let's say between 0 and 1. Uh, and those curves all have to satisfy that um, the, that u, that, that's going to be the curve, u of 0 equals 0 and u of 1 equals 1, right? So what might that look like? So let me just draw the family of curves that we're considering. So this is going to be u as a function of x. So here's u of x. And we said it has to equal 0 at 0, but it can be any curve in between there. And let's go ahead and say this is 1. And then uh, let's say this is also 1, so that it must meet there, right? So we can have some curve. Let's say it looks like that, right? Uh, as we've, we've uh, 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 seen before, what we want to do is look at this quantity, the slope of this line. So if I, if I take this slope here, and I, I see that I can make my triangle there. This is du, and this is dx, and then this distance is ds, right? Um, so what I want to do is I want to find the curve u of x such that the total length l is a minimum. Well, how do we write the total length l? Right, L is just going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 ds, right? Let's call that equation 1. But we observe up here that, that uh, via the Pythagorean theorem, we can write uh, ds as follows. Right, Pythagorean theorem says that ds squared will be equal to dx squared plus du squared, right? That, that's the purpose of that little triangle that I drew. Um, so uh, let's, let's continue on and do a little factorization and say that then ds squared uh, is equal to, I'm going to pull out the dx squared term, and then I'm left with uh, 1 plus uh, du squared over dx squared, which is equal to dx squared uh, times 1 plus the quantity du dx, squared, right? Uh, and you know what this is. This is u prime, right? So let's call this equation 2. Okay, so I want to get ds so I can plug it into equation 1, so I just take the square root of equation 2, and I have that then ds is equal to uh, this quantity 1 plus um, uh, u prime squared to the 1 half times dx right call that equation three now I'm going to substitute uh, equation three into equation one and I have then that L uh, is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of um, 1 plus u prime squared to the 1 half dx right call that equation four so what have I done? I've put the problem uh, into a form such that uh, what I need to solve is uh, a functional, right? I need to extremize this functional that's given by L, right? So why did I do that? Why did I put it in this form? Because we already know what equations have to be uh, satisfied in order for that to occur, right? So I want to observe that L now is in the form of the functional that we talked about in the previous lectures. Right, and so we could maybe more properly say this is L of u, if we want to write it in the same form, is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of some function, which could be a function of x, u, and u prime, right? dx, uh, let's call that equation 5, where in this case, uh, we can write that f uh, is going to be just equal to 1 plus u prime squared to the one half, right? So that's that's f in this case. Call that equation six. Okay, 
What do we know? We, we know from our previous work that any extremizing function u must satisfy the Euler-Lagrange equations for the functional. And we stated that those Euler-Lagrange equations were as follows. We said that was d by dx uh, of the partial of f with respect to u prime minus del f del u equals zero, right? That's the Euler-Lagrange equation. Call that equation seven. So we look at equation six, and we can see that there is no explicit dependence on u, so del f del u goes to zero. And so in that case, the Euler-Lagrange equation becomes just d by dx of the partial of f with respect to u prime is equal to zero. Call that equation eight. Okay, so now let's go about solving this. Okay, so what do we know? Well, if the derivative of something equals zero, then that something uh, must be a constant, right? That's easy. So we can say integrating equation eight uh, gives the following. It says that partial f with respect to u prime uh, is equal to, we'll call it c1. And now let's go ahead and substitute in equation six into there. So what that means is that the partial with respect to u prime of the quantity one plus uh, u prime squared to the one half, right? That the partial of that with respect to u prime is equal to C1. Call that equation nine. So now let's go ahead and carry out the differentiation. Uh, in equation nine gives the following. Well, we have let's say partial with respect to u prime of one plus uh, u prime squared to the one half. We just, this is a series of chain rules. So this is gonna equal uh, one half times one plus u prime, the quantity squared, now to the negative one half, right? Times uh, two uh, u prime. Now in this case, my two is gonna cancel with my one half. And I'm going to be left with, I'm going to go ahead and put this negative power in the denominator. I'm left with u prime over 1 plus u prime, the quantity squared, to the 1 half. Uh, and that whole thing equals c1, according to equation 9. Let's call that equation 10. So now what we want to do is solve for u prime in terms of c1. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides and then multiply by this denominator uh, to start with to get that u prime, uh, the quantity squared, is going to be equal to c1 squared times 1 plus u prime, the quantity squared. I'm going to expand that out and I end up with c1 squared plus c1 squared uh, times u prime, the quantity squared. Okay, continuing on, I'm going to subtract off this quantity and move it to the other side so I can get my u primes on the same side and factor them out. And so this now becomes 1 minus c1 squared times uh, u prime, the quantity squared, is going to be equal to uh, c1 squared. Okay, continuing on, I'm going to now divide by 1 minus c1 squared. u prime squared is equal to uh, c1 squared divided by one minus C1 squared. Take the square root of both sides, and I end up with that U prime uh, is gonna be equal to C1 divided by the square root of one minus C1 squared, right? Which, what do we know about this? Uh, whatever C1 happens to be, this is a constant, and then this quantity is a constant, so we can just call whatever that constant is, call it A, uh, and I'll just remind you here, it's a constant. Okay, let's call this equation 11. So now we're getting very close to being done. Now we're gonna solve equation 11 uh, by just integrating it, right? So integrate equation 11. So if I have, I have then that uh, uh, u is gonna be equal to the integral of u prime, right, uh, dx, uh, which will be equal to, in this case, this is just equal to a, so this will be ax, and then I have to add a constant, let that be b, right? So I'll call that equation 12. 
So now the only thing I'm left to do is apply the, the conditions that I have to have, I have to be zero when x equals zero and the function has to be one when x equals one, forcing those endpoints to be at the same location. So I'll say apply the boundary conditions. Okay, in that case, I end up with that u of zero equals zero. And what that tells me is that b equals zero. And then I have that u of one equals one, which tells me that a equals one, right? So what, is, what did I conclude? Then that my ultimate solution is uh, the, on the path that extremizes the, the line length. And it's in this case minimizes. It's a straight line um, given by u of x equals x, right? Call that equation 13. And this is our sort of, this is our extremizing function. And what we just showed was that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line.